They want to. Hi. They want to. Just hit me next time. Solo this. I've got a half a double chorus before the solo. Just started. Here we go. Man, good to see you. Sound great, Jason. Thank you, man. Fantastic. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Yeah, it sounded better all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Moving further and further away from the original. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks well, for doing it, you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, seems like yesterday, but fortunately, it's 34 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Where did y'all cut this? We cut it in uh, Burbank at the old Warner Studios, Amico Studios. When we were cutting this record, we were right next door to James Taylor doing uh, Shower the People with Love uh, record. <laughs> And it was, you know, it was just that those were the times. If you want to hang around for a little bit, we'll yeah, man. break down everything. And love to ask you some at, questions. At too, my age, I got nowhere to go. So. <laughs> <laughs> man, I really appreciate you taking the time and coming in and hearing this. I had no clue. So. I'm glad, man. I was glad I came down to hear it. It sounds fantastic. I got to take it to the streets record. I think my mom or dad had it. And, you know, I started listening to that as a kid. And, you know, I was growing up on, you know, 50s, 60s music, you know, the Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah. You know? I was growing up on all that stuff, and then, you know, as soon as I heard that Taking It To The Streets record and the Minute By Minute record, I mean, it was just the sounds of those records were what was phenomenal. And when uh, Derek, George, and I had sat down to kind of produce this thing, it was, don't mess this up. You know, don't, <laughs> don't do anything, don't do anything they wouldn't have done. And, of course, you know, we cut it digital, which is a little different, but, uh, sure, sure. you know, man, I'd, I'd love to get your ear on what you've heard, too, you know. And, any questions you have on that? I no, man, I think you guys topped it. I really do. Well, thank it, you. It really sounds great. But it, it, it also has all the, the girth and the, and the, and the feeling that uh, the original had and then some, really. Where did this song come from? I mean, where did it all happen? You think? This song was uh, actually uh, funny. I, I, I wrote the little piano intro part of it uh, one time on the way to a gig. It was just in my head. And as I was driving, I think I was kind of singing it in my head and I could hear the chords and I thought, I'm not sure if those chords actually would work out in, in real life, you know, if I wanted to get near a keyboard, you know, so I, when I got to the gig, I, I got set up and I kind of worked out the intro and uh, the chorus kind of, but uh, n never really much more than that. And I, I had a conversation with my sister who was a college student at the time <laughs> and uh, talking about, you know, uh, all the things that we're talking about today you know, in terms of uh, you know the economic disparity and you yeah. know, things that uh, especially in the inner city at that time were, we're really starting to become you know, right. uh, uh, obviously problematic in that so it just seemed like well you know the song had that kind of gospel feel and it seemed to like you know want to say something you know outside of the the love song realm, you know, yeah, so. something that wouldn't be said then, yeah yeah you know so that that was really where that that whole idea came from you know when you really start to listen to great melodies, those are things that last a lifetime. And I think, you know, like today is a perfect example of here we are 34, 35 years later probably. Right. And, and and now cutting, you know, something that that's, it lived this long because it was a great song and, and people yeah. relate to that. And I think whether you're 13, 36 or 100, you can listen to those records and understand that they were some of the best records ever made. And I mean, thank you for making great records and well, nice giving us a that, shot man. to do this, you know. Well, thanks. I, man, vocally, you handled it more than well. You know, it was, it was great. Uh, and I think that's, uh, I always love uh, that kind of connection with, you know, uh, with country and, and blues. Is it really just, it's a very fine line there. You yeah. know, and most of my favorite country singers sing R&B just as well. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I hope that, you know, when you came in, it was something that you went, oh, man, this, this did somewhat of justice. Uh, It'll never be the yeah. same. But. Well, yeah, like you said, you know, it, there's a certain way to handle a, any song. But the first thing I noticed was you guys were, were you know, playing it in that groove. You kind of have to let it play itself, and you have to kind of just, you know, kind of, it's a collective energy that that, that kind of song looks for. You know? Yeah. Well, man, I, again, I appreciate you 
having us and doing all this stuff. And yeah, my pleasure, Chase. Yeah. It's great, great thrill for me to hear. Yeah, you, man. You Thank you. It, man. Thank you very sure. much. Maybe next time I'll learn to play saxophone or something. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> stick with the slide. Just, yeah. Yeah. I think oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that works just as well. Or, yeah. But, you know. Yeah, man, absolutely. Well, dude, thank you again. I appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you, buddy. Good to meet you. Meeting Michael McDonald is like meeting an icon. There's no words to explain the feeling that I have meeting him and going, I just cut one of my favorite songs of all time, and now I'm meeting the guy who did this. I know he says that I, that I did it justice, but I hope that he walks away going, man, I want to hear that again. I want to hear this a second time in my car. I want to turn it up.